the first scientific publication about velvet worms, was published almost exactly 200 years ago. And for that reason, I wanted to remember the people, the human side of this field. Therefore, I have selected a few researchers who have contributed significantly to the field. The first is, of course, Lansdown Gilding. He was a talented naturalist and artist from the tiny Caribbean island of St. Vincent, which you can see here. I could not find any portrait of him, but he might have dressed like this. He graduated from Oxford University and still young became a fellow of the Linnean Society in 1818. He corresponded with Joseph Hooker and Charles Darwin, providing them with notes on the natural history of the Caribbean. This is an image of a party in 19th century St. Vincent. In 1821, he married Mary Hunt, but she died in 1827 while giving birth to their fifth child. Gilden remarried to Charlotte Melville in 1828 and had two more children with her. He discovered the first Tonisophorum known to science, which he named Peripatus, in this forest at the other side of his island. He wrote, It inhabits primary forest in St. Vincent, often walks backward. If pressed, it releases viscous liquid from the mouth. Among the plants that I collected at the foot of Mont Bonhomme, I astonished, discovered by chance the only specimen. This is his own illustration of the animal. Gilden died on vacation in Bermuda, aged 34, and I could not find any records of the cause. Jean-Victor Audouin was a French physician and naturalist who became a professor of entomology and member of the Academy of Sciences. He married a talented painter, this is her self-portrait, who greatly helped him with his work. He was among the first to suspect that Onishophorans were not mollusks, but wrongly thought that they were annelids. Charles Emile Blanchard was a French zoologist and entomologist who published several works but failed to support Darwinism, opposed Darwin's election to the French Academy of Sciences in 1870, and uh, he became fully blind in 1890. Blanchard wrote the detailed on issue foreign chapter for the book uh, Historia Física y Política de Chile, edited by Claude Gay. Adolf Eduard Krube was a zoologist from Königsberg, Prussia, who described over 500 species of polychaetes. He concluded that onychophores were neither mollusks nor annelids, that they needed their own phylum. So he formally described the phylum onychophora in 1853. Lorenzo Camerano was an Italian zoologist and alpinist who strongly defended Darwin's ideas and had a large scientific output of more than 300 publications, including several papers on South American onychophorans. He started as a painter and ended his life in wealth and success as a member of the parliament. He has been unfairly forgotten, and his work on velvet worms deserves to be read and valued. That's why I have included him here. Eugene Louis Bouvier began his initiation into natural sciences by collecting plants under the advice of his high school teacher and became a teacher himself. In his words, my father, a peasant watchmaker, owned the farm and I loved going into the surrounding woods to observe the animals. I brought back insects to my teacher and especially fascinated me. I was a good student and I finished first in the region in a primary school competition. He used to remember as an older man. He later got the museum's chair of zoology. His work on gastropods led him to evolutionary interpretations of organisms. He found that only evolution could explain everything he had found. 
He became the founding father of onychophorology and wrote the only monograph of the whole phylum to date. At the museum, Bouvier established a citizen science program to enlarge the collections and, pressed by his enemies to work with insects instead of onychophorans, published several entomological books for the general public. He died shortly before the liberation of France from the Nazi invasion. Sydney Milena Manson was the first female doctor of science at Cambridge University. She studied the physiology, anatomy, embryology, and biomechanics of South African onychophorans. She was also a great sportswoman, captain of the Cambridge swimming team. And she used that skill to collect specimens in the first ever scientific expedition to the Australian Reef Barrier. Silvia Campiglia and Roger Lavalade are two outstanding names in Brazilian zoology. In the 1960s and 70s, they studied the physiology and other aspects of onychophorans from southern Brazil. Silvia was of Italian origin and Roger, I think, was French, but did most of his career in Brazil. I could find almost nothing about their personal lives. And Sylvia, apparently, is still alive. I have these photographs thanks to the kind collaboration of Cristiano Sampaio Costa. Hilke Ruberg is a zoologist from Germany who published a large revision of the southern family of Onychophorans, the Peripetopsidae. And uh, she has continued to publish other studies on that family even after retirement in 2005. Once she told me that as a girl, she assisted a relative in a shop where small metal pieces were manipulated, and this led her to develop the manual skills needed for the dissection of the tiny onychophorans of the Southern Hemisphere. Bernal Moreira Brenes was born in a small coffee plantation town in Costa Rica. From a young age, he showed an exceptional aptitude for science and a deep curiosity about the natural world. He studied at the University of Costa Rica, the Karolinska Institute in Sweden, and the Pompeo Fabra University in Spain, and became a respected human geneticist. But he has also studied the Onychophora of Central America for decades. He has published abundantly under taxonomy, ecology, genetics, systematics, behavior, and conservation. Actually, he is the one who got me interested in onychophorology and has been my mentor since the early 1980s. He is now teaching the next generation of Costa Rican onychophorologists. Other names that appear with some frequency in the onychophora literature are Noel Tate and Robert Messiboff from Australia, Gonzalo Giribet from Spain, Georg Maia from Germany, Cristiano Sampaio Costa and Ivo Zeno Oliveira from Brazil, and Jose Pablo Barquero Gonzalez from Costa Rica. These researchers and thousands others have contributed to our understanding of onychophorans, their behavior, and their evolution. The human side of onychophorology is a reminder that science is not only about facts and discoveries, but also about people. Thank you. <laughs>